power might be changing hands in Washington, but tensions remain high between the U.S. and China. Beijing is hit back after Secretary of State Mike Pompeo accused Beijing of committing genocide in Xinjiang. China has dismissed the claim as an outrageous lie. Mr. Pompeo's likely successor, Anthony Blinken, has also endorsed the genocide assessment. Mr. Blinken says there's no doubt China poses the biggest challenge to the United States. I also believe that um, uh, President Trump was right in taking uh, a tougher approach to China. Uh, I disagree very much with uh, the way that he went about it in a number of areas, but the basic principle was the right one, and I think that's actually helpful uh, to our... And for more on China's reactions, Olivia Xiong joins us from Beijing. Olivia, strong parting words from Mike Pompeo, also echoed by the man picked to succeed him under Joe Biden. Is China keeping up? the strong rhetoric. Absolutely. Well, as expected, we see China expressing its firm opposition uh, with regard to this U.S. accusation of genocide in Xinjiang. And in a statement, the Chinese embassy in the U.S. said that Mr. Pompeo had ignored the facts and made groundless attacks on the Chinese government's policy in Xinjiang. And once again, it says that the U.S. is interfering in China's internal affairs. Now, the United Nations estimates that there are about one million Million Muslim Uyghurs that are being held in internment camps in Xinjiang. That there are also there are also accusations of forced labor and sterilization. But this is something that China has long denied. It says that what it has are vocational training centers that are meant to teach people skills, and it has framed its policies in Xinjiang as an attempt to stamp out extremism. Now, China has tried to shake off allegations of alleged um, uh, human rights abuses in Xinjiang for some time now, uh, but has continued to face pressure from the US, the UK, and other Western countries. And it looks like um, even with a transition in power in the US with the incoming Biden administration, that the US will not be going soft on China, even as the foreign ministry in China has called for the US to meet it halfway. Have a listen. Olivia, on a separate development, China has imposed a partial lockdown in Beijing. Is it a containment or preemptive measure? Well, what we are seeing right now is that China is battling its worst outbreak of COVID-19 in about a year. Of course, the numbers are not as high as compared to the peak that we had seen last year, but uh, the number of confirmed daily cases today stands at 103. And so uh, that is of concern. Seven of these cases in particular were in Beijing, six of which are in the Daxing district. And that is a district in the south of Beijing where China's uh, or rather where Beijing's second international airport is located. Now, we are also hearing that, you know, two of these cases have been linked to the strain that has been recently found in the UK. And Beijing is telling its 1.6 million residents in Daxing that they should not be leaving Beijing. Five neighborhoods there have been placed under lockdown. All who entered the, cap the capital after December 10 are also being investigated. And this, uh, you know, latest resurgence of the virus is causing concern because we are just weeks away from the Chinese New Year or Spring Festival, and that's when we typically see a travel rush. Authorities today said that they are expecting 1.7 billion passenger trips to take place, and that works out to a daily average of about 40 million trips per day. Now, that is 40 percent less compared to the pre-pandemic year of 2019, but that is still 10 percent more than what we had seen last year. And so this big number is still of concern, and there are other restrictions being put in place as well to deter people from traveling during the Chinese New Year.